Yo, what's up guys? You're watching CSS for Beginners Lesson 52 and this is going to be part one of a CSS website build. <laughs> Alright, so these website build tutorials are going to be split up into two videos and to follow along with them to the full extent, you're probably going to want to download the files I've already created. Alright, so that's the HTML files, all the image files and the finished CSS file. Now, I've uploaded them for you guys here onto GitHub. So all you have to do is come to this address, I'll pop that in the description down below, and then click this download zip button right here. That's going to download a zip file with all the website files in it. You just unzip that on your computer and hey presto, you have the finished product. Now, if you want to delete all the CSS in that product from the style CSS file, you can and we'll add it together. Otherwise, if you just want to follow along and kind of tweak the design yourself, feel free to do that also. It's up to you. But once you've downloaded that, join me back here and we'll start making this website. So here it is. This is the website. We're going to build a nice, respectable bike selling website. Nothing wrong here. And essentially, you can do this with everything I've taught you in this CSS playlist. We're not going to use any advanced features whatsoever. Everything I've taught you can be utilized to make a web page like this. How cool is that? So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that right now in the code. All right, class, I'm back here in brackets, and what I've done is just put a vertical or horizontal split on, should I say here. So we've got our HTML at the top and our CSS at the bottom. Um, I've also clicked this little button here, which gives us a live preview in this window. That's a cool feature of brackets. So as I make changes here, it's going to automatically update over here so we can see as we go along what is happening. So before we start, I'm just going to increase this font size a little bit so you guys can see and I'll uh, just quickly go through the index file which is here so we've just got a dead simple head with the title of bikes and then we've linked up the style sheet there down here we've got this div idea of wrapper that's enclosing all the content on this page and that's basically going to just bring the content into a middle column of like 980 pixels in width or something like that then within that, we've got our nav of main navigation. That's all these links here. And you notice as I hover over some of the elements or click some of the elements, it kind of highlights it over here. That's really cool. But anyway, that's the main navigation with some li tags and some a tags in there. Then we've got this div ID of lead banner with an image in it. That's just this here. Then the section with an ID of shop. This is a HTML5 element, by the way, as is this nav. They're pretty cool elements, just semantic elements. That's all. And um, within this section of shop, we've got uh, our product image, our name, price, the button, and the star rating. And then right down at the bottom of this page, we've just got this funky image of a bike, which is here, with the idea of footer banner. And uh, God knows what that block is there. Apparently, it's just going to make your bike even more awesome. So, yeah, that's the website. All right, so let's start adding some styles then. Now, we're going to start with the body tag because I want to give the body tag some basic styles that are going to be inherited throughout the document. And the first one is the font family. And I'm going to say I want everything on this page to be Arial. Now, we know through inheritance that because I've given it to the body, that every tag within the body is going to inherit that style. Therefore, everything should now be Arial. These links are, and this text down here is. Cool. The next thing I want to do to the body tag is give it a margin of zero. Don't want it to have a margin you see how it budged up there to the left so we've taken that away from it and the third thing i want to give to it is just a background color and we're going to make it a light gray which is just e e e e e e now a little trick if you've got six letters here or numbers that are the same we can shorten it down to three that's exactly the same so i'll do that and then we'll target our wrapper id which is just ID wrapper. And then this is the one that I want to bring into a central column. So I'm going to give it a width of 980 pixels. And then remember that little technique I showed you where we say margin, I want zero for the top and bottom, and then auto for the left and right. That centralizes it, remember. That's all in my previous tutorial on margins. Go and check that out if you've not seen it. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is give that a background of white, which is just FFF. So we've done that, and next I want to target this main navigation section here, which is going to contain all of these links. So I'll just grab that main navigation. And then within that, I want to give it a background of like a, a really deep charcoal gray, which is going to be 181818, 
Okay, cool. You can see that update on the right. And then I want to give it a padding of 10 pixels just to give it some space all the way around like that. There we go. Cool. So next we'll grab the UL tag within the main navigation. Oops. And let's just scroll down here a bit. I'm going to say that that UL, I want to align all the text to the right. That's going to bring all the links now over to this side. I'm going to say also that I want the list style type oops, to be none. I remember that's going to take away those dots here. So if you see before I add that none, you see those dots there, they come as standard with list items. I've taken them away with that property there. And finally, we'll say we want the margin right to be 10 pixels, just to give it a bit more space on this side. Okay, the next thing I want to do is target those li tags within the UL. So main navigation again, and then li. And this time I want to say we'll display them inline block because remember, block elements automatically take up this full width here. That's what they're doing currently. If we display them inline block, we're giving them the best of both worlds. We give this, give them those um, block level qualities so we can control the box model properties but we also say we want them to line up next to each other much like inline uh, tags okay so we'll say display inline block and that brings them all up next to each other and we'll give each one of those a margin left of 20 pixels that's going to space them out a little bit all right cool so now we've done that, we just need to target, let's bring this down a little bit, the A tags within those LIs. So main navigation again, we'll say A, and we don't need to go like this, uh, UL, LI, we don't need to get really specific because these A tags are the only A tags within the main navigation. So this will do fine. And with these, we'll say we want to give those a color of white, which is FFF, yeah? Uh, text decoration, of none, this is going to take away those underlining, uh, underlined rules underneath the, the A links. And then we'll say we want to text transform. And we're going to make these uppercase. And then finally, we'll give them a font size. Oops, let's uh, do that properly. What have we done there? Okay, there we go. Font size. Of 14 pixels and in fact one more thing I'm gonna give those a padding of six pixels cool so they are the links at the top of the page now now I'm gonna do one more thing I'm gonna scoot up here and you see this class here of current that's where we currently are that's the page we're on because that's what this current class means. Now, I want to style this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is make a rule for that down here. I'm going to say main navigation A, and then the class is current. So we go A dot current, and that's going to grab that A tag with a class, uh, class of current. And with this, I want to give it a different background color. I want to give it a background of like that beige color you saw on the, uh, the finished product. And the hex code for that is 8 f seven four if i can remember this six c i think yep there we go cool you can just see it up here it's changed now and then let's give that a border radius as well let's give it a border radius just a small one of four pixels makes it look a bit different all right so there we go guys that is the head a little bit styled so that's all I'm going to do for this lesson. Believe it or not, in the next lesson, I'm going to cover the rest of this and we'll probably have it done in five minutes. I kid you not. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then for the final version.